Good morning and welcome to Rising. We are extremely excited about the show today and eager to discuss everything going on. Yeah. Rihanna, what can they expect? It's been a big night. Okay, Politico's Brittany Gibson will join us to break down her new reporting on some questionable payments made to Georgia gubernatorial candidate Stacey Abrams' campaign chair. Plus, we'll get into the much-discussed Fetterman-Oz debate out of Pennsylvania last night. You will not want to miss that. But first, the Congressional Progressive Caucus has now withdrawn its letter pushing President Biden to engage in direct diplomacy with Russia less than 24 hours after its release. Progressives faced enormous backlash from both sides of the aisle for what critics say is an overly conciliatory approach toward Russian President Vladimir Putin. Even Senator Bernie Sanders refused to endorse the letter and directly dismissed anti-war protesters' claims that the Biden administration's current strategy is too hawkish. Here's Joe Scarborough's take on MSNBC yesterday. Did they, did they walk into uh, Kevin McCarthy's office and say, hey, we want to help you out here. We know that you stuck your foot <laughs> in your mouth about Ukraine, so we're going to help you out here. I, just think about this. Vladimir Putin invades Ukraine. Vladimir Putin commits war crimes against the Ukrainian people. And you have 30 progressives saying America must talk to Russia. I, some, something's left out of that equation. And that would be the Ukrainian people who are victims of war crimes every day, Mike. Uh, no one's saying Zelensky shouldn't be invited to the meeting. <laughs> Jesus. In a statement released last night, CPC Chairwoman Pramila Jayapal said the letter was drafted several months ago and then blamed an unnamed staffer for releasing it without proper vetting on Monday. Jayapal called the letter a, quote, distraction and reaffirmed the CPC's commitment to supporting the Ukrainian military. This is a disaster it's, and a, yep. a very sad and unfortunate, I'm genuinely sad yep. at, at the extent to which this is a setback for uh, for the anti-war uh, contingent to the extent there even was one yep. within the Democratic Party, uh, humiliating in fact, yep. for, uh, for the position I support. Look, uh, uh, when we talked about this earlier this week, I, you know, reference the fact that it could be the case that these protests that AOC has been um, subjected to, <laughs> confronted with at these town halls and the like, might have actually moved the needle. Maybe progressives woke up and said, you know what, you're right. We shouldn't be losing the anti-war movement to people who have somewhat consistent records on being anti-interventionist who are more conservative to them more broadly. And so here comes this letter, which I want to be really clear, was incredibly milquetoast and is com being completely mischaracterized by Joe Scarborough. Yes. The original letter did no not go far enough. Here, here's just a little bit of what it said. It, it didn't ask for any withdrawal of funding, no. of aid, of military no. support, nothing. It simply said, um, given the destruction created by this war, blah, 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 uh, we believe it's in the interest of Ukraine and the United States and the world to avoid a prolonged conflict. For this reason, we urge you to pair the military and economic support the United States has provided to Ukraine with a proactive diplomatic push, redoubling efforts to seek a realistic framework for a ceasefire. This is consistent with your recognition that, quote, there's going to have to be a negotiated settlement here, and your concern that Vladimir Putin, quote, doesn't have a way out na right now, and I'm trying to figure out what we do about it. The American people have the right to attach some conditions right. to the endless aid we are yep. giving to Ukraine. The letter did not say the aid should end. Nope. It just said, let's push for diplomacy as we are doing this, Correct. bringing it closer to in line with the, with, uh, uh, speak, um, the soon to be likely Speaker McCarthy's uh, position in that the, the, end, the aid cannot be endless, cannot be no conditions, no strings attached That's forever, right. which is what the Biden administration has said. Right. Saying it was so good to see some movement in the Democratic Party the other way. Bit. No, and that was all. So what do you actually think, Did was this letter released by a staffer who's maybe more pro uh, or more anti-war and was trying to create some momentum there or was genuinely an accident or Jayapal signed off on it and then changed her mind after the blowback. I, I think, think any of those think, things are possible. I mean, I can't know for sure, obviously, yeah. but my impression is that it was signed off on. Maybe it was drafted at an earlier time, but they're completely throwing this aid under the bus. So in the, in the, in the new letter, retracting the original letter, 
you know, they argue that it was it, the timing was off. Ilhan Omar did a tweet to that effect. But Ro Khanna, I will give him credit. He's been standing by the original yeah. letter, and he he tweeted uh, a, a tweet that said basically, let me let me say something about the CBC staff. They're extraordinary. They have helped shape the yeah. biggest goals for progressives and have been very effective in our wins. And he stood by them. Yeah, but look, we, we the, actually, the I think we have something from him on that. Let's play that. Yeah. I think my job is to make sure I'm looking out for America's national interest and for our values. And let me tell you, it's in our interest to make sure there's not nuclear war. It's in our interest to make sure this war doesn't escalate. And it is in Ukraine's uh, interest and the world's interest to make sure there, that we do everything possible to lessen civilian casualties. Now, if someone wasn't voting for arms or if someone was saying we're not going to vote for new aid packages, that's what uh, Leader McCarthy is saying, that he may not vote for uh, new aid. That's a problem. But he's virtually alone. Everyone else, most other people tried to distance themselves, didn't try, did aggressively distance themselves from the letter uh, for fear of appearing too dovish toward Russia. I, this is insane. It's truly it, insane. It, it, it really is. And, and listen, listen to what, listen to what, how, how they characterize um, the, 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 the new letter, the withdrawal letter. Uh, there's, there's this implication that you know, again, given how mild the original letter was, it didn't it didn't say anything the way uh, of the likes that it's being characterized here. The new letter says the proximity of these statements created the unfortunate appearance that Democrats who have strongly and unanimously supported and voted for every package of military, strategic and economic assistance to the Ukrainian people are somehow aligned with Republicans who seek to pull the plug on American support for President Zelensky and the Ukrainian forces. How jingoistic is is this coming from not just the Democratic Party, but the progressive flank of the Democratic Party, kowtowing to this idea that if a Republican says anything like this, then it must be a bad idea. For all of the crowing about bipartisanship that comes out of Congress, this is the kind of bipartisanship we would actually like to see. Yes. People allying on an, yes. uh, allying on an anti-war effort. Unfortunately, they bent the knee. Even Bernie Sanders came out and said that the letter was a bad idea and supported the it's withdrawal of it. And the whole thing about the timing, that also does doesn't make any sense because one of the excuses kind of being floated there, right, is that when the letter was written several weeks or months ago, um, the Ukrainians were in a worse military uh, military situation, and then they've had all these victories, and and now so then the implication would be well now it, it, we no longer need diplomacy because they're winning and they're doing so well. Though, but that situation could easily be reversed when Russia commits more resources over the coming weeks and months. Now is a great time to have diplomacy and, and use Ukraine's good. I'm glad they're in a strong position. Again, it's their country. We support them, et cetera. But use, this, uh, use their victories as leverage to work out a settlement. That would be a, a great idea. The idea that, well, now we don't need diplomacy because they're, they're winning. Because they're going to defeat Russia? It's insane. It's ridiculous. <laughs> it's completely is ridiculous. Russia it's completely with American ridiculous. Military might. It, it is absurd. It is absurd. And it speaks to the stated goals of the State Department, which is to go mm -hmm. a blank check at all costs to weaken Russia. Blank check, that's to, the Biden administration to, stated yeah. position. And, and with, with the goal of weakening Russia, not necessarily doing whatever is advantageous for the Ukrainians who are the ones that are mm -hmm. suffering and dying in the yeah. context of Let alone our people who are economically affected by right. all this, which is playing to clearly playing to Republican strengths in this coming election, which Correct. is we're two weeks away. Correct. Well, we'll get into more of the fallout, actually, from this letter. We're going to continue talking about this a little bit later with The Hill's Hannah Trudeau. And uh, we'll have next Brianna's Radar and discussion of the Fetterman-Oz debate, which I know you're eager to hear from us on. Stay tuned.